talked about um, how you can build stories around your disruptive events. We already talked about one of the other foods that I eat, a hard-boiled egg, and how I try to heat it in the classroom. And last week I finished a lesson on density, and I was pouring myself a can of ginger ale, I'm getting ready to eat raisins for a snack. And I got to thinking, hmm, I wonder if the raisins would sink or whether they'd float. So I made a prediction, just like I'd like you to do right now, about whether these will sink or float. And I test it. Everyone has a prediction. Threw my raisins in, and I was right, they sank, which is what I expected. But then I saw something really strange start to happen. There's a few more in there. I'll come around a little closer so you can see what's starting to happen to them. They started dancing on me. I want you to look at why they might be <laughs> dancing. <laughs> that big one just doesn't quite want to go yet. <laughs> now, with elementary students, first thing they'll say is, well, you got music on, that's why they're dancing. So, to make sure that that's not um, affecting them at all, we'll get rid of the music, and you can see they're still dancing up and down there. So what's going on here? Why are they going up and down? What did you notice when you observed them up close? Kathy? You can see like all the, like, all the bubbles like, attaching to them. Okay, yeah. By the way, we know what these bubbles are now because they're the same bubbles we made when we mixed the vinegar and the baking soda. See how you tie lessons together with kids from prior experiences? What were those bubbles? Carbon. carbon dioxide. So these are carbon dioxide bubbles. Okay, so what's happening to those carbon dioxide bubbles, Kathy? Can you explain it again? Um, they're like attaching themselves to the raisins. What, like what characteristic do the raisins have that make it easy for those bubbles to attach? <coughs> they're like grooves in there. Wrinkly, they've got those little grooves. Okay, they're lot. So you couldn't do the same thing with grapes or M&Ms or anything because there would be no place for the bubbles to attach themselves to. So as soon as enough bubbles are attached, what do they do to the density of the raisin? lighter, allowing it to float. What's happening when they get to the top then? Why do they come back down? Okay, bubbles pop. That makes the raisin again more dense. Okay, so it sinks back down until it collects enough bubbles. And these will do this for 15 or 20 minutes until all the carbon uh, carbonation is out of it. Uh, you can use any carbonated beverages. Obviously, if you use Pepsi or Coke, you can't see the raisin, so you need something clear. I found ginger ale seems to be more carbonated than Sprite and things like that, 7-Up. So even the you know the generic ginger ales um, work really well. So there's a discrepant event for today. Questions about it? Again, anytime.